Each proton NMR spectrum contains four really important pieces of information that can help us determine the structure of a molecule. And in this video, I'll be going over those four pieces of information and talking about each one of them very briefly. I won't be teaching you how to do any analysis in this video. I'll be doing that in the next few videos. So when we're analyzing a proton NMR spectrum, the first thing that we wanna look at is the number of peaks in the spectrum. Each peak in a spectrum corresponds to a unique type of hydrogen atom. So the number of peaks gives us the number of unique types of hydrogens. It's important for me to emphasize here that the number of peaks doesn't give us the number of hydrogen atoms, it gives us the number of unique types of hydrogen atoms. Also, I want to point out that um, each individual little spike in an NMR spectrum is not considered a unique peak. We're looking instead at these clusters. So in this particular NMR spectrum, we see there are three peaks. There are three clusters or three areas. And so each one of these clusters corresponds to an individual peak. So there's one peak right there. Here's another peak right here, and then this is another peak as well. So this tells us that the molecule that generated this particular spectrum has one, two, three unique types of hydrogen atoms. In my next video, I'm going to be going over this idea of unique types of hydrogens. The second piece of information that we get from an NMR spectrum is the actual location of these peaks along the x-axis. So are they located here versus in this position versus maybe over here or further down as well. The location of the peaks gives us information about the proximity of that particular hydrogen atom to any electronegative elements such as oxygen or halogens nitrogen, things like that. So peaks that are in one particular position along this x-axis may be closer or further away to different electronegative atoms that might be present in the molecule. Also, we get some information about the uh, number of hydrogen atoms from the area under the peaks. The area under each peak corresponds to the actual number of hydrogen atoms that are associated with that peak. The area under a peak is obtained by taking the integral of the peak, which if you have done calculus, you understand what that means, and there's a lot of math involved with that. But fortunately, our NMR instruments take the integrals for us. Sometimes the integrals are presented to us as with what we call an integral trace, which is kind of an S-shaped curve that could be right over the top of a peak like this, or it could be placed up above the peak. So sometimes we'll see shapes like that that are on top of our NMR spectrum, that is communicating the integral or the area under the peak. Other instruments will just give us a numerical value of the integral, which could be written right on top of the peak or somewhere near the peak, maybe underneath it. And these numerical values are gonna be crazy, so they're not corresponding to the actual number of hydrogens. Um, for example, 1010 does not mean that there's 1010 hydrogen atoms corresponding to that peak. Remember that these numbers are just giving us the area and we have to calculate the actual number of hydrogens from that area. Last but not least, the splitting of the peaks gives us information about the number of neighboring hydrogen atoms. So we'll write here the number of hydrogen neighbors, the number of hydrogen atoms that are near the hydrogen atoms that are generating that peak. The splitting of the peak refers to whether or not each individual peak is shown as just one single line or it divides itself into some smaller lines as well. So this peak right here, we can see because it has four different spikes on it, we see that this thing has been split into four. And that's gonna give us some information about how many hydrogen atoms are near the hydrogen atoms that generate this peak. This peak right here has not been split at all, so there's no splitting, which is not uncommon. This little peak down here has been split into three, so this one is split into three. And like I said, in the next few videos, I'm gonna go through each one of these features, one at a time, each one getting its own little video, and I'm gonna be talking about how you can analyze each one of these different features of the spectrum, putting it all together to help us determine the structure of molecules.